Hey everyone, if you're wondering what lens you should go with for your portrait photography, today I'm gonna to share with you some of my favorites with example photos. I've picked a really wide variety of lenses to look at today to show you as many different results as possible. So we're taking a look at lenses from primes to zooms, wide angles, all the way to telephoto. Starting off, I wanna talk about mid to telephoto prime lenses. This can include anything from 50 millimeters and above. For me personally, my most used telephoto prime lens is the Sony 85mm f1.4 GM, followed very closely second by the Sony 135mm f1.8 GM. There are also less conventional portrait telephoto primes such as the Sony 400mm f2.8 GM, which I did challenge myself to do a portrait session on, and you can see the struggles and the rest of the results in that video, which I'll leave linked down below if you're interested in watching the rest. While I mostly have portrait photography examples to share with you today, all the focal ranges I'm going to be sharing with you have other uses aside from portraits. So in the telephoto prime world, these lenses can be used for sports photography, landscapes and wildlife for example. Since these lenses have a long focal range, they are perfect for getting that extra reach to be able to photograph subjects that are far away or it allows you to keep your distance if you can't get closer to the action, like with sports or wildlife. Another interesting aspect of using long lenses like this, which I find I like to use in my landscape photography to get shots that look like this, is also the reason why you would want to use it for portraits, and that is the compression. By using a telephoto prime on a subject that you can get close to and you can ask to move around, you can create compositions and photos that look really different to real life due to the compression a long focal length causes at particular distances. For this reason, primes like this are the lens to use if you like creating dreamy looking portraits where the background melts away into beautiful bokeh. One big bonus of using a telephoto prime is this look is still achievable even if you opt for purchasing a more budget friendly lens which has an aperture of f2 or f1.8 instead of the wider apertures of f1.2 or f1.4 that higher end lenses have. Because of the compression of the lens, you will still be able to create that depth and background to foreground separation, even at higher apertures. The downside of these kinds of lenses for portrait photography though, is the distance between yourself and your subject. Sometimes this can be a positive. For example, when I am photographing a wedding, if I notice the couple is really nervous to be in front of the camera, I'll use my 135 millimeter prime to be able to give them more space and not be so in their face with my camera so they can feel more at ease. For portrait sessions, especially with a lens like a 135, you end up being quite far away from your subject, so it's a little harder to talk to your subject and give them direction while you're shooting. I usually have to stop and pull my camera away from my face so they can hear me properly, which can disrupt the flow of the shoot. You also need quite a spacious location to be able to maximize the full potential of these longer lenses. Since you're seeing so much of my portrait photography today, I do want to share the process of how I edit these photos. So after editing the colors, I like to do skin retouching and I used to use the method called frequency separation, which if you have watched my tutorial about that, you would know it is a very time consuming process and I'm always looking for a way to shorten my editing time. Today's video is sponsored by Evoto and I am so excited to have found this software. I've been using it for the past couple of months and just look at these results. In Avoto, you have quick and easy skin retouching tools. I personally love the smooth face skin slider to give that dodge and burn retouching look, but without having to spend all that time manually retouching. Another personal favorite of mine is the dark circle remover. It does such a good job and still keeps the portrait looking very natural. There are so many more options for editing from automatically removing skin blemishes, whitening teeth, removing veins from eyes. You also have your tonal and color adjustment sliders, including curves, HSL, lens correction, and more. So Avoto is a one-stop editing program where you can edit your photos from beginning to end to deliver to your clients. Another bonus is you can also save presets and sync your edits so you are able to retouch in bulk. If you're interested in trying out a Avoto, it's free to download and experiment with their sliders so you can see these results for yourself. Please be sure to use the link in my description to check it out. If a long prime lens isn't for you, a focal range that will give you a completely different look is a standard zoom range. This can include lenses like the very popular 24-70, which there are a few variations of, 
There are lenses that range from 28 to 75 or 20 to 70. There's a 20 to 40, which is a little on the wider zoom range side. Or you have kit lenses that usually cover a wide standard zoom range like 18 to 75 or 28 to 80 or 28 to 105. There's so many numbers. <laughs> Either way, standard zoom lenses are probably one of the most versatile lenses since they can cover a wide focal length like 24 or 28 millimeters, a mid focal range of 50 millimeters and a telephoto focal range of 70 or 80 millimeters. Lenses like this are a great option for photography where bokeh is not your main aim. So something like fashion or event photography. Due to the zoom range, it's a really convenient lens to use for family or group photos and again, events where you need to compose your photos quickly. This would also be a good option if you're looking for a potentially lightweight or rounder lens that you can just leave on your camera and never really have to switch out lenses for general purpose photography like daily shooting, street photography and travel. While standard zoom lenses sound amazing because they are so versatile, the downside for me is the aperture. If you have a style of work that doesn't utilize much bokeh, where it's better to capture a realistic look of the scene and include more details of the background and the environment, then this won't be as much of an issue. But if you're a photographer who wants to achieve that dreamy style of photography we were just looking at with our telephoto primes, it's not going to be impossible with a standard zoom because I have captured some beautiful looking photos that could pass for a prime lens, but it will be much, much harder. The reason I was able to capture these photos with lots of bokeh is I was shooting on the longer end of the lens. Once you start zooming out, you lose the compression of that 85mm and the background will become more and more prominent. So what if you do want the convenience of a standard zoom lens, but you want to easily create those dreamy photos all the time? Well. That's where my favorite focal range comes in, wide angle primes. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you would know that the 35 millimeter prime lens is my favorite of all time, regardless of what brand I'm shooting on. Since my camera is the Sony a7 IV, I use the GM 35 millimeter f1.4 and it has been my favorite 35 millimeter that I've tried so far. And I think I've tried all of them over the years. <laughs> Aside from 35mm, which I feel like is the spokesperson for wide angle primes, you also have some other options such as 20, 24mm, 28, 40, and 50mm. The reason I love wide angle primes so much is that they're great at capturing environmental portraits where the subject is still the main focus of the image. You can see in these photos how the subject is really prominent in the frame. And you can also see more of the location they're in compared to the earlier portraits taken on telephoto prime lenses. On top of that, you also have the dreamy feel to the photos due to the shallow depth of field. A downside here though, is that at these wider focal lengths, aperture does make a difference. If you get a 35 mm f2 or f2.8 lens, you're gonna face the same issues with bokeh we were talking about with a standard zoom. Since it's a wider focal length, it's going to be much more difficult to create distance between your subject and the background to create dreamy photos. A wide angle prime is also still not as versatile as a standard zoom. It takes a little bit longer to compose your shot since you have to physically compose by moving yourself around rather than just zooming the lens. During a wedding, I use a 35 mm prime as my main lens to capture photos throughout the entire day. And you do get used to a certain focal length when you use it a lot. So you end up knowing where to stand or how to use the environment to get the best photos possible. So for me personally, I don't find a 35 prime to be slower to use than a standard zoom lens, but I do wanna mention it as a downside as it can be a bit of a learning curve at first to get used to it. Next up, I asked on a community poll on YouTube and this was your least favorite focal length, telephoto zoom lenses. And I get it, there are not that many lens options. They can be a bit expensive, but I do wanna try and change your mind about it because you can get some stunning results from this type of lens. A telephoto zoom can be a lens like the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8, which is probably one of the most popular tele zoom lenses out there. I even own one. I have the Sony 70 to 200 f2.8 GM2 lens. There is also the 200 to 600 millimeter lens or a 100 to 400 millimeter. Tamron even have some super zoom telephotos with a really wide focal range of 50 to 400 or 70 to 300. 
The main thing these have in common is all of these lenses cover a long focal range, even when they're at their widest end. Very similar to telephoto primes, you can use these lenses for sports, travel, and wildlife as the long focal length is great for photographing far away subjects. For portraits though, these lenses are great at bringing the background towards your subject to give you some really interesting results when using them out on location. I have a whole video where I took portraits on the Sony 200-600mm to lens on the narrow streets of Poznan, Poland, and here is some of that behind the scenes footage and a couple of the photos we captured. If you want to watch the whole video, I'll leave a link down below. As you can see, the final photos I captured look so different to the location we were shooting in. Since a long focal length has a really narrow field of view, you are only seeing a tiny sliver of your location in the background of our photos. You can use lenses like this to hide the fact that you are working in a busy location. So if there are a lot of people around or the backdrop you're working with is really small. A telephoto lens can help you work around those obstacles to still create great final images. A downside of telephoto zooms is just like standard zooms, the aperture. While the 70 to 200 across different brands has a standard aperture of f2.8, which is pretty easy to work with, the longer these lenses get, the higher the apertures are. The 200 to 600 has an aperture range of f5.6 to f6.3. The Tamron 50 to 300, as another example, has an aperture of f4.5 to 6.3. Since we are so zoomed in, the issue here isn't about bokeh. Again, the compression of these lenses is going to make it pretty easy to create background to foreground separation. The limitations actually come down to your camera settings. I find when I have to use telephoto zooms out on location, I need to keep my ISO quite high to have a reasonable shutter speed to not get any motion blur in my images. Another thing to keep in mind that makes it more difficult changing your settings on location if you shoot in manual mode is having a variable aperture in these lenses. It's another thing to keep in mind while you are shooting to make sure you're staying on top of your settings while zooming to capture different compositions. But that is all I have for today. I really hope you found today's video helpful. If you want to hear more about focal lengths and which one is right for you, I'll leave a playlist linked in the description with a bunch of other tutorials that I've created. And let me know in the comments what is your favorite focal range, what you find you use the most for your photography. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.